works. Um, so um, today we're going to be talking about celebrating Advent in the classroom. Um, and I just created a little agenda for us. So to talk about what the weeks of Advent are, um, some classroom activities you can do, a booklet, some service project ideas, a little giveaway at the end, and then a special deal that I'm running um, for today only. Um, so as many of you probably already know, the weeks of Advent each have a theme. Um, so week one is hope, week two is peace, week three is joy, and week four is love. And um, these weeks can kind of drive how you talk about Advent with your students. Um, and um, week one, two, and four being our um, purple weeks, and week three being our week of joy, um, pink, when we're getting closer to Christmas um, and the birth of Jesus and that excitement um, that comes with it. And um, so this is just a little picture of one of the activities that I'll be doing with my kiddos this year. Um, just a little foldable that comes with a PowerPoint to kind of guide you and um, talk about the weeks of Christ or of Advent along with um, the um, meaning of the Advent wreath and what all the colors mean. Um, so it's kind of like a, a quick overview, but a little bit more fun um, for the students to do. Um, so there'll be links at the end for everything. I call them quick links so that you just have one sheet that you need that has all the links and I'll drop them in the comments at the end as well. Um, another thing I like doing with my students is something called prayer partners. Um, and I have a specific set just for ad the Advent season. Um, we do it two to three times per week. It comes with a simple guide, a prompt question. The Advent ones are specific for the Advent season. And it creates a safe space for conversations to, for students to talk about um, their faith and to pray with one another. Um, and I do have a set of um, four free prompts, one for each week. Um, if you're just starting out with um, prayer partners, doing it once a week during Advent is a great way to get started. And each of them is themed to the week of Advent. Um, so at the end, there'll also be um, the link if you wanna grab those um, four free prompts. Um, it's just a great way to um, kind of get dip your toes into prayer partners. Um, and uh, so those uh, you can grab at the end. Um, but prayer partners is a really neat thing that um, you can do year round or you could just do during Advent and Lent. Um, but really powerful way for students to connect and talk about their faith with one another. Um, next is a simple Advent wreath. Um, so for many years, I did um, an acts of kindness Advent wreath, and that's the picture that you can see there um, that each day we added to the Advent wreath um, one of the leaves, and it was an act of kindness that the students um, could do that day. Um, this year, we had our students in third, fourth, and fifth grade um, to trace their handprints on um, green paper, and we turned that into our wreath. Um, just really simple, but I think profound that, you know, lets us know that we're all in this um, together and, and working and waiting for the coming of Jesus um, with one another. Um, and then on the next side, I have um, a picture of an individual um, Advent wreath. Are you not actually? I have a picture of it, but um, I have it here too, which you can um, see. Now mine are out of order, and I do apologize for that. But um, the one that you'll get um, you can, will be in order. But each of them has um, a little reflection that students can do each day or each week. Um, so it's a simple craft. Um, and there's um, leaves that are easier for the younger students as well. So that I know these ones are a little more complicated, but just a sweet thing. And I actually put it up on the wall last year at the beginning after they did the um, Hope can uh, Candle. And then they went out each week and they just, it was on the wall already, um, but they wrote in and added to their, um, the different weeks. So um, it was um, a beautiful hallway display, but also meaningful for the students. Um, and then I also um, love having a traditional Advent wreath. So I have um, the actual wreath with the real candles in my classroom um, so that students are seeing like the physical um, Advent wreath and not just crafts or bulletin board sets. So love having an actual one in my classroom um, as well. Um, so those are just some pictures of Advent wreath um, displays that I've used in the past with my students. Um, another thing I love to do is the Advent ABCs. We put these outside in the hallway um, where um, 
the advent wreath is. We have a, the third, fourth, fifth advent wreath. Um, we put the advent alphabet out there. And so each of the words is advent slash Christmas themed. Um, you can see in the picture there, like S is for shepherd, um, A is for angel. So each has its own poster, but then it has a, a student booklet that goes with it. Um, and so there's three different versions of the student booklets. Um, and the first is the pre-K kindergarten one, which is just tracing. So it'll say A is for angel and they'll trace the letters of angel. Um, and then the first and second grade one has like a few different activities, some fill in the blanks, some um, little um, word searches and things like that. Um, and then the third or fifth grade one is more of a reflective one. Um, at this point, they probably like have learned a lot about Advent in the season. And so that, um, this is a picture of the third, fourth and fifth grade one um, where they're asking them to more reflect on themselves in the season and what it's all about. Um, and each of the questions is tied to the letter that it goes with. So um, I suggest doing maybe a letter a day or maybe two um, depending on when you get started with it but this is just a really cool could be like your bell work for religion too um, and so at the beginning of the class students pull this out um, they work on it you can discuss it or not with your students um, and then they put it away and you get started for religion so it's kind of like a, an easy way to incorporate advent where you don't even have to think about it but students can pull out their booklets and do it independently um, before starting your regular religion class. So um, that is the Advent ABCs. Um, an Advent calendar is a really fun way to um, get students excited and um, for them to learn more about the Advent season. So I know um, Advent calendars are really popular and there's a ton of different ones. Um, and so there's two that I'm gonna share with you today. The first is a chain and I have the physical chain here with me. Um, and it is color themed. And so the purple weeks are obviously purple and the pink is the week of joy. And each um, week starts with a little prayer. And then they do have different acts of kindness and the students can either have their own individual lines. And I'll show that in a picture in a moment. I will say that's a little more tedious for them to do. Um, but this also makes a great class advent calendar that you can hang up and then you tear it off each day and then when you, you know, to show that you're getting closer to Christmas. Um, but students can do their own individual ones if you want. But this is, this makes, I would say, a great class one. Um, the individual one that I'm doing this year with my students is um, actually um, a collaborative poster. So they're adding to it each day. And so um, it's like here is the December 7th one. Um, it says, what is one hope you have for the world? And they're writing about it. And so none of these are on, this is the finished product. So none of these are, will be on there. It'll be a blank page and students will cut out um, a square for each day and fold it and glue it on. And in the end, it'll turn out looking like this. So um, it's a really kind of unique way of doing it. Um, but I'm excited to do that one with my students this year. Um, and each day has a different question for them to um, reflect on. So um, something probably best for our third, fourth, and fifth grade students. Um, so these are these are pictures of the chain. Um, you could see that I have student individual chains there. That was during COVID. So they got to put it, you know, we were six feet apart. They could put it on um, their own um, desks and then we would count down from there. So. Um, just a, a, a different way of doing it if you wanted to do it individually. Or maybe even if you have table groups, each table group could have their own. Um, and it makes a festive classroom for the month of December. Um, next up, I wanted to share um, a few books with you that um, I think are really great ones to use during the season of Advent. Um, and so the first two, and they're... Um, are by the same author. And um, the first one is called, um, it was the season of Advent. And they each, it starts um, December 1st um, and just has a little reflection um, for each day of Advent. And it's just a cool um, and beautifully illustrated book. Um, you know, and this could be something you just have out that your students could 
you know, read through, or maybe you read it each morning as your morning prayer. Um, but it's it's a really neat book. And then the other one is was the evening of Christmas, and this one tells the story of um, Mary and Joseph and traveling to Bethlehem and um, the shepherds and all that. And again, just really beautifully um, illustrated. Um, book. So these are two that I definitely recommend um, using in the classroom. Um, another one, which is kind of an interesting twist, um, is um, St. Francis and the Nativity. And St. Francis is credited with making the first um, nativity scene. And um, so this is, it's not, this is not the true story, but it is um, a sweet story, a little take on um, how that came to be. And again, another beautifully illustrated book um, and just talking about the importance and the joy that the nativity scenes bring um, to um, our Christmas and Advent experiences that we have. So um, that one is St. Francis and the Nativity. And then and, um, I have here another one in this about the whole life of Jesus, um, the light of the world. But um, I love Catherine Patterson and I, I love the illustrations in this one. So I didn't want to leave this one off. Um, and it just, it goes through the entire um, life of Jesus, but starts um, obviously with um, his birth and the, the pictures are just breathtaking in this book. And it's um, really written at um, a level that kids can understand, which I think is important. And so um, I feel like a lot of the of books and the stories and even the Bible sometimes can be above our students' um, heads and levels of reading. And so this one um, is a really great one. And then the last one is an interesting take. And um, I found this maybe two years ago, and it's called Santa's Prayer. And um, it's a sweet story about these um, two kids. Um, and they see um, that Santa is out they see that he goes into a church and they follow him in and they're like, what's he doing? You know, why is he there? And um, Santa kneels down at um, the, the manger and um, had praise to God and to baby Jesus. And um, he want his prayer is wanting for kids to, know that you know while the the christmas trees and the presents and the excitement of of christmas and all that comes with it that it really it's jesus at the heart of of what we're celebrating and um and so it's just a really um sweet story that ties um santa and and the christmas nativity story jesus's birth um all together um so uh, that one is uh, Santa's Prayer, a really sweet, sweet story. So, um, and these will all be linked. So um, if you uh, didn't get all those titles or are interested in one, um, they'll all be linked at the end for you. Um, next up are um, some service products ideas. I know it's really um, uh, a big uh, time of the year to do service projects with your kids. So um, some things that I've done with my students in the past, um, we've made toiletry kits that um, can be passed out to those that are experiencing homelessness or donated to a center or a foundation for them to hand out. Um, so we would collect the items and then put them on baggies um, and then um, deliver them as needed. Um, another one is creating ornaments for your neighbors. And so um, I've gone out and gotten uh, just the little um, ball ornaments and then um, markers and students are decorating that like the paint markers and students could decorate them and put them in little baggies and they would give them out to elderly neighbors or um, sometimes like the UPS delivery guy or whoever in their neighborhood they really felt um, was helping bring that Christmas spirit um, to the community and so um, sharing ornaments and that were homemade they made them which was really special to them as well. Um, you can also make um, some homemade lunches um, for those that are experiencing homelessness and just um, bring them a little joy during this holiday season. And then another popular one are pajama drive or coat drive, um, which can be donated to 
um, shelters or um, community centers for um, people that are in need this season. Um, so those are some service project ideas that um, would be great for the Advent season. Um, all right, so it's time for a little giveaway. I'm going to be giving away um, a free copy of my um, Advent calendar um, uh, collaborative poster. So um, if you are here live, go ahead and let me know in the comments what your favorite Christmas song is. And when this is over and I can see comments and all that, um, I will um, pick a winner and contact you to send you your own free Advent um, calendar. So um, that is our giveaway for today. And then the last thing I just want to spend a moment talking about, oh, first, one thing first, um, these are the quick links. So if you go to Advent quick link, bit.ly .advent quick links 23 and the A, the Q, the L all need to be capitalized for it to work, or you could use the QR code here. Um, you'll get this list um, and it has all links, draft links um, for you to click on um, to bring you um, to those resources, whether they're freebies or something that's in my TBT store or um, one of the books that I talked about. Um, you can click on any of those and it should work. So um, I'll put this in the comments as well, but it's um, bit.ly um, slash advent quick links 23, or you could scan that QR code there. I'm gonna have this up again at the end, um, but I do wanna talk quickly about um, Seton Scholars, which is my teacher membership um, for Catholic school teachers. And the idea behind it is to save you time with face-based faith-based resources for your students. Um, and so each month you'll receive an exclusive resource and I'll talk about that more in a moment. Um, and we also have a great um, online community as well of teachers. Um, so what happens each month, you um, get a monthly um, resource page that's um, updated with all the resources that you can use for the month. Um, you get a monthly blog post, which talks about kind of what's going on in the church um, in um, that month we do, it talks about the exclusive resource and it talks about something called Fourth Friday Fellowship, which is a fellowship opportunity for your students to participate in. And it's already thought through for you and kind of giving you the ideas um, and just a way to give back to your community each month. Um, you get exclusive resources. So resources that can only be found in the membership and you get one of those every single month. And then as long as you're in the membership, you get all the past ones as well. So um, exclusive resources are um, a fun way. Um, you know, they're, they're fun and they're different they're, and you can't find them anywhere but in the membership. Um, you also get a monthly calendar that is a PDF and you can um, click on it and it brings you right to the resources. So if you're not sure what's happening in um, each month, you'll get this and then I'll have everything that you need on it um, to kind of help you through the month and plan your religion classes. Um, and so today I'm running um, a sale on it and I don't run sales on Seton Scholars um, very often at all. Um, and so um, today is a special one and because the sooner you join, the more that you'll save. Um, and so you'll get 40% off if you use the code ADVENT40. And there's only one code and you can kind of see it goes down 30% off ADVENT30. Um, and then um, there's an unlimited amount of 10% off codes. Um, and so you can um, save on any individual um, membership um, when you join, you get instant access to um, like tons and tons of resources. It's I call it Netflix for Catholic school teachers in that it has um, all the resources that you um, need there. You get your monthly pages, but then you, you, you get any Catholic resource that I have um, on my TPT store and then some because of all the exclusive resources that have already been added to it. So um, Advent's a great time to join um, because all the resources I talked about today are included in it. Um, and um, if you join today, then um, you can save. So you can go use the QR code here or use um, the bit.ly Seton Scholars All Capital to join. Again, I'll put the link in um, the comments when I'm done, um, but we would love to have you join. This is um, a great time, a great season um, to join Seton Scholars and, and join the community of teachers um, that have already been there. So. Um, finally, this is the quick links again for you. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you're able to 
Um, take something away from this that you can use with your students, whether it's a book that you can grab from the library and read with your students, or you'll um, grab the um, free um, uh, linking on it, um, prayer partners for Advent, um, or maybe one of the crafts that I, I showed you. Um, I hope that something um, will be able to be used in your classroom this year. And I hope that you all have a wonderful Advent and Christmas season with your students. And thank you so much for joining.